Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. So today we're gonna to add some front bracing to the KRX. So, before we add the bracing, let's talk about it. What is it? Why am I adding it? And do you need it? So, let me show you the kit that I got real quick and I'll talk about the other kits that are out there and what I like and don't like about each kit and then why I'm adding it to my KRX and do you need it? So first of all, let's look at this kit right here. So here's the kit that I ultimately decided on. It's made by Brute Performance, and it's the heavy hitter um, tab mount reinforcement brace kit, whatever you want to call it. So it comes with your front upper A-arms. So the heavy hitter comes with an extra one of these. This is the upper rear A-arm and your lower. And because I'm adding two of these, it comes with longer bolts, and you'll reuse the nuts right there. And to install all of this, all you need is a 17 millimeter uh, wrench and a 17 millimeter ratchet or wrench from the other side. And here in a minute, we will measure and see how thick these really are. So at the time of filming this, there's really only three kits available. You got the Brute Performance like I purchased here and they have two versions of it. They have their standard kit and then the heavy hitter kits, which just gives you a couple more braces. There's another kit very similar to this online that we won't talk about. And then there's the Super ATV frame brace. Now, before I get any farther in this video, let me show you on the KRX where it's gonna go just to clear up any confusion. So the kit that I got, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and tie this lower mount here to that one over there. And then it's gonna go ahead and tie this mount front and rear to the other side over there. And then this mount, the front of this mount to the front of one there. Why would you want to tie these mounts together? Well, think about it. If you're out and you're four wheeling and you're doing rock crawling or doing a lot of climbing of steep ledges where you've got one tire constantly coming off the ground, you're putting a lot of weight on a tire, such as this front one. Even if you're in four wheel diff lock, there's still a lot of pressure. I mean, think about it. The KRX is 1,896 pounds when it comes to a factory. Throw some bigger tires on there. Uh, you know, a featherweight driver like myself, some bumpers, a winch, and you're easily 23 to 2,500 pounds. So if you're trying to climb a rock ledge and you only got one front tire on contact before the second one gets on there, that's a lot of leverage pushing back. So to tie all the tabs together gives you less of a chance to rip a tab off. Now I said there's another style that's the Super ATV frame brace, which I had on the Pioneer. So what does that one do? Well, let me show you. What that one does is actually a steel plate that goes up on this bottom here, and it ties this mount here to the rear and then to the other sides. So you have all four points connected. So there's the differences between the two. The Super ATV only supports the bottom A arms, but it does all four mounting locations. With the Brute Performance does the front lower tabs and then both of the uppers, but you could do better. So what would better be? Well, it would be taking the Super ATV for the bottom, and then it would be taking the Brute Performance for the top two tabs. And to go one step farther, if Super ATV, if you're listening, think about it, having a replaceable skid plate for the Super ATV frame stiffener. Now, what do I mean by that? Something just as, you know, quarter inch thick that would line up with your half inch skid plates on the rest of the machine. So it's a nice smooth transition but it's replaceable because you know what? These plastic skid plates from like Trail Armor, they slide across rocks a lot better than the steel skid plates. And I know it from personal experience because when I had the frame stiffener on the Pioneer, it had lots of nicks and dings and deep scratches from going across rocks. So it just makes it that much easier on your machine. So now let's jump. Do you need one of these products? No. No, you probably don't need one of these products if you drive the way the manufacturer figures you're gonna drive. So what do I mean by that? Well, Kawasaki did a great job testing this machine and they actually beefed it up pretty good. So it's 1,896 pounds, as I said earlier, wet weight, stock, no accessories. But by the time you start adding your bumper, your winch, roofs, light bars, mirrors, rear bumpers, oversized tires, the weight can get up there and then depending on what you're gonna do with it. Now think about it, Kawasaki came stock with a 31 inch tall tire, 
which is really more like a 30. And I have 35 inch tall tires on here, which is really a 34. Um, it's a lot of weight. It's like 70, I don't remember the weights, but it was like 71 or 72, 73 pounds per a rim and tire on each corner. So that's a lot of extra weight pushing on this front end. Now, previously in the past, there were certain side-by-sides, and I won't name them, that really did need frame stiffeners because they were tearing tabs and whatnot. And until very recently, there was still a very high powered machine that had issues with the front end that needed gusset kits. Now for the 2022 models, I know they've changed it. Uh, supposedly they don't need them, but still it doesn't hurt to upgrade if you're gonna keep this within the way Kawasaki decided for you to drive it. I don't do that. I live in Arizona, so we drive these things on the road all the time. They weren't designed to be driven on the road on a regular basis. I take this thing out rock crawling. We do all kinds of fun stuff. And if you're gonna be adding portals or larger tires, lift kits, all kinds of different things, well, you gotta, you know, you gotta play to play. Let's get this installed. So first step we're gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna take the shocks off. I'm gonna install the front upper. Now I have the heavy hitter, so it comes with two. So I went ahead and measured these. They're about three millimeters thick or 0.13 of an inch. Together with the longer bolt, I'm adding six millimeters or almost a quarter of an inch thickness and plating front and rear. So that should really help the upper air mount tab. And then the rears will measure here in a second. So let's get these installed. Once that's off, it's pretty simple. You can take my brace, thread one the bolt through one end, come through here, Bolt's just barely gonna fit. Gonna go. Should be no alignment issues. Slide back just a little bit. My second brace through. And then I will hand start the nut. And then I will go to the other side. So let me get the other side on. And we will not tighten this down until there is weight on it on the ground. So now the front ones are done. Again, we're not gonna tighten anything. It's just hand tight, taking the slack out of the bolts and the nut until the weight is on it on the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and do this lower front. So the beauty of this one is you only have to take the nuts off. You don't even have to take the bolts out, just like the upper rear. That'll be fo the follow-up one, which is this. As you can see, it's got a cutout for the differential. So we have this one installed, then this one. I'll put the wheels back on and then we will put it on the ground and torque it down. And yes, I do have the torque specs. So the front lower is even easier. You're just gonna come down here. You don't even have to take the bolts out. Just like this. You take it in and just slip it on the other side. You don't even have to take the bolts out of this. And we'll go ahead and hand tighten this right back up and move on to the upper rear. All right, so now we're to the last brace, which is going to be the upper rear brace. So as you can see, I've taken the bolts out. And what you're gonna, right here, is you've got this notch, okay? This notch is gonna be closer to the driver's side. And what you'll do is you'll take the bolts out of both sides and you're gonna slide it, and I'll show you here in a second, behind the differential vents, behind the plug. I'll have to go to the other side and show you. And set it on just like that. And then you're going to go ahead and put the bolts back in. And then we will tighten it on the ground. Let me show you that other side. So I haven't put the bolts in over here yet, but as you can see, there's your tank fence over here. I have the two cables going above it. And here's one of your sensors for the front differential. So you slide it behind there. And then that ties these front two tabs in together. So I'll get that bolt in, we'll get the tires on, on the ground, we'll get everything torqued and wrap this install up. So everything's installed, now it's just time to torque it down. Now normally I would put the tires on her to torque it down because you want weight on the suspension. I'm doing something a little bit different and I'll show you here in a second. I do have my torque sheet from my manual on uh, page 2.9. If you look at the bottom, it says suspension. If you want to freeze frame real quick. Okay, so what am I doing? Well, let's show you. So this is what I'm gonna do to torque everything down. Now typically I'd put the tires on uh, it's a lot safer that way, but it's much easier to get a torque wrench in here. So what I've done is I put my jacks at each corner. I have about a half inch of space 
between this big jack and my um, jack stands. So I'm gonna get in there, I'm gonna torque everything down real quick with this. It just makes life easier. Um, I showed you the torque specs. So let's get that done, get the wheels on and be done for the day. So here's a quick look after it's installed. So as you can see these upper replacement bolts, you got five, six threads there, um, nice and tight. But on this rear bolt and this bolt here, you only have about one to one and a half threads. Now these are torqued down. Um, I do have weight on the suspension. If you'd order Brute Performance's non-heavy hitter kit, it comes with just one of these and this one there. You could actually do it without even taking the shocks, everything off. Just take the nuts off each one while it's on the ground, slide the brace on, put the nut back on. It could be an easy 10 minute install. There you have it, there's your install, super simple. So this install with the heavy hitter kit from Root Performance is 20, 25 minutes. Um, you really don't need to take the wheels off like I said I did for uh, camera angles. Uh, if you got the, the standard kit where it only comes with two braces, like I said earlier, 10 minutes to install it. You don't have to take anything off, not to adjust the shocks, not to jack it up, do anything. So why did I choose this kit over the Super ATV frame stiffener? Pretty simple, um, I wanted the skid plates. Uh, is this kit really worth it? Well, only you can decide that. Um, it gives me warm fuzzies, uh, knowing I have a little bit more support, especially as I get more and more into rock crawling and finding rock ledges and just different stuff to crawl over. Speed is not really my thing, except for a couple times a year at the dunes. So what would I change with this kit? Well. Honestly, the bolts. So I like with the heavy hitter kit, you get longer bolts on the top. They have excess threads, you get five, six extra threads. But on the rear and the bottom, um, you only have about one, one and a half threads. And that's after I torqued everything down. So I would typically like to see, you know, three threads sitting there on average, two and a half at the minimum. Uh, so that's why I added some orange Loctite. And there's no instructions that come with this. Now it's it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you just put the pieces on there and torque it down. So that's the only change I would have on it. Um, you know, there's that mythical hybrid model I'd love to have with the you know whole frame stiffener and these upper tab mounts and a replaceable skid plate in the bottom. But um, I don't think anyone's ever going to make it. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and until next time, just think. Less than 30 days, I'll be in Moab having some fun testing this kit.